So latitude and longitude and how it changed the world. So what I want to do in this video is really talk about the, the discovery of latitude and longitude and you know why it's one of the greatest human discoveries of, uh, of all time. And um, you know a lot of the things that we take for granted, like our cell phone or the internet, you know those are huge uh, discoveries in terms of the information age, but there were some tremendous just you know, uh, groundbreaking inventions in the history of mankind that really changed everything. For example, like the printing press. Um, you know, before there was the printing press, you couldn't, you know, books would have to be handwritten. And, you know, uh, and so knowledge and information couldn't be shared. And that's, you know, probably considered one of the, one of the greatest, along with some other, you know, inventions along the way. But, I think most people don't know much about latitude or longitude other than their, the lines on the globe, but they may not have any idea how important um, these two words are. Specifically, longitude is what I'm really getting into um, in, in uh, our modern world. So what I want to do is go ahead and explain it. i got my little uh, picture of a globe. Now, my interest in this, I'll just tell you very briefly, um, I do a lot of uh, videos, a lot of math videos, science videos. I like anything that's math, science related. Um, but in a former life, I was a U.S. Navy officer and actually a navigator of, um, of a Navy warship. And that was an awesome job because, you know, you really have to apply um, the best of both worlds. Modern technology like GPS and things we used, but we also, you know, uh, learned and practiced the skills of celestial navigation and, you know, use the stars, the sun, the moon, all that to help us, you know, figure out where we're at, you know, where we were at in the globe. Because think about it, if the GPS system goes down and those things can happen, you still need to, you know, uh, be able to navigate. So I just want to give, uh, uh, you know, you out there, being that you probably have maybe have very little uh, or some maritime knowledge, maybe you have a lot. But I'm trying to direct this video towards people in a quick amount of time to give you a real appreciation of why longitude and latitude are so critical um, in our modern world. Okay, so with that said, let's just kind of look at the world here for a second. So if here is the world before, you know, let's say thousands of years ago, you know, where, how did people, you know, go out to sea? Well, they would maybe stay very locally in their their region, but if they kind of went out into the ocean, let's say like the Atlantic Ocean, they literally didn't know where the, you know, they were clueless. They were pretty much lost. And so, you know, it really prevented people from going here to here, you know, to, to uh, across continents. Now we all know the great explorers, Columbus, etc. you know, Magellan, who just kind of took a risk and, and started discovering the world, but they didn't really have any real navigation systems per se. They had some, and I'm going to speak speak to those um, right now in a real general sense, okay? So let's start off by defining a few things here, okay? And I'm going to, I'll get back to my little globe here in a second, but let's talk about latitude. So here's my little earth here. So latitude, not longitude, latitude are the lines that go this way on the globe, and I'm going to focus on the northern hemisphere. So we have the equator, Right then, we have these lines that go up, okay, and then here is the North Pole. Right now, you can tell where you're at. Let's say you're a ship, okay, right here. You can tell uh, which line of latitude you're at. So here we have zero degrees, and this works your way all the way up to 90 degrees north latitude, and then it goes this way into the south latitude. But for the purposes of this video, I want to focus on the northern hemisphere. Now. The way you can tell, okay, what line of latitude you're on is by looking at the sky and finding the North Star. So let's say this is our ocean here, okay, and here's our little ship, okay, let's say. And we're looking up in the sky and we see the North Star like right here, okay. Now, if I can measure from uh, from my position to how many uh, to the horizon, how many degrees uh, of separation this is right here. So let's say this is 15 degrees. So I see the North Star pretty pretty close to the horizon. 
if I see it at 15 degrees, I'm on, I'm at 15 degrees north latitude. So that's not, you know, you're not too far away from the equator. So you're kind of like maybe down here. All right. So likewise, if we uh, see the North Star like way up here, that's too close. Maybe like up here, like it's 75 degrees. You're seeing it way up there. That means you're way up here at 75 degrees north latitude. So uh, navigators and mar mariners knew this this uh, um, fact. Okay, they understood latitude, and they could find the North Star uh, Polaris in the night sky. Okay, it's one of the most important navigation stars in the northern hemisphere. Of course, if you are at the North Pole, the North Star is like right over you. Okay, so all the na all navigators would have to do is effectively. Uh, figure out where the North Star was at, and then they had a, uh, some instruments, some real crude instruments, um, one that looked like a uh, kind of like a cross staff like this. They would hold it, and it would just kind of just get the distance off the horizon. And, and what they would do is, and let me kind of, well, I'll stick with this drawing here for a second. They'll take, they'll, they would leave port, and they would stay at a particular lat, uh, line of latitude. Let's say this is 30 degrees uh, north latitude. So, they would just stay on that line of latitude and just keep going across the globe, okay? Because they were, you know, pretty safe. And the, the way they would do that is just keep that North Star always at that at that height, if you will, in the in in the sky. If it was getting too far, um, south, you know, closer to the horizon, they knew they were going south, and so they would just make adjustments accordingly. So navigating my latitude was pretty well understood for a long time. Now, let's go back to our little drawing up here. So let's say you're leaving here uh, Spain, and here's uh, the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, you would take off. And I'll let the lines of latitude here, well, I'm going to kind of draw them. They kind of go like this, right? They're kind of wrap around the Earth like so. So people would take off here. And they would just kind of start sailing and doing their thing. They would stay on one line of latitude, and maybe they would end up in some port over here. Okay, and then from this port, maybe up way up in Nova Scotia, where that's at, they would just kind of follow the coastline down, 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 and it would hit all these ports, you know, uh, uh, Newport, maybe like Rhode Island, you know, Boston, New York, etc. You kind of get the idea. But they would hug the coast. They would pilot along the coast. So this is why they were able to kind of discover ports, okay? But to get to these ports, they would have to stay along the coastline. They couldn't just go directly from Spain and go straight to, let's say, you know, um, Savannah, Georgia, or, or Jacksonville, Florida. And of course, you know, these are, or St. Augustine, or whatever you want to say. They just couldn't go directly, okay? Because there was no line of latitude. They would just stay on these lines of latitudes, okay? Now, what that would do... It was cause of ton of problems. And this is where your pirates would hang out. Okay, so your pirates would be like, hey, hanging out because all the ships are coming along this line of latitude, and you know um, they would <laughs> obviously rob them and do their pirate thing, right? So as navigation evolved, and this is even before you know before even they understood latitude, ships literally would just get totally lost out in the in the, in the ocean. So things were really you know primitive, if you will. But latitude really certainly helped. But here's the thing, latitude is, that's only one, you know, uh, one part of knowing where you're at. If I know what latitude, if I know, let's kind of go back to this picture here for a second. If I'm on the 30 degrees north latitude line, okay, if I'm like, okay, I'm at 30 degrees north latitude, but where 30 degrees north latitude? Am I right here? Let's say this is, let's just make, make this up. And by the way, I don't have a globe in front of me, just kind of. We don't need to get into that detail for the purposes of this video. But let's say this is 30 degrees north latitude. Well, if I'm seeing the North Star at 30 degrees off the horizon, where am I at? Am I here seeing it? Here? You could be anywhere along along this line seeing the North Star. So you, we really want or we really need another line of position, okay? Something like this to tell us exactly, you know, where we're at. We need this line. This Now, this line here is the longitude line. This is the longitude line. Now, again, in a northern hemisphere, pretty simple to get your line of latitude. But 
Longitude is a completely different deal, okay? Much more challenging to get. Now, let's talk about longitude. Let's, let's focus in here on the United States. Longitude is effectively time, okay? It's where you're at in terms of time. So if you're in New York City, all right, and it's 3 p.m., let's kind of erase this here, and it's 3 p.m., and it's in, and someone else is in Los Angeles, and it's the current time, what time is in L.A. if it's 3 p.m. in New York City? So for those of you who are not familiar uh, with the U.S., we have uh, well, four time zones technically, but, but these are three hours apart. It's noontime over here because New York City is three hours ahead. And the, the good kind of um, way to think of this is when you watch the, uh, the New Year's Eve uh, shows and you see you know, these, uh, the New York City um, Times Square people are celebrating before the people in Los Angeles, right? Because the globe is turning, okay? So we're ahead in terms of time. But this concept of time zone, all right, time zones is, is a concept of, of, of longitude, okay? So one kind of crude way of thinking about it is if I knew what line of latitude I was at and I knew the times of where I was around the world, right? I knew the times of the city. Just think about it if you knew that. You're like, oh, it's 30 degrees north latitude and, oh, it's three... It's, uh, and, and the local time is 3 p.m., then you might be able to kind of figure out maybe you're like right here, right? This line of longitude because it's 3 p.m. over here. This is East Coast time. It's 3 p.m. in, in uh, Florida, 3 p.m. all along the East Coast, etc. So it's 3 p.m. here in this time zone, and you have a, um, a latitude line. So this is how you get a basic what we call fix, all right? It's a position. So you know where you're at at C. So longitude is, is a function of timekeeping, okay? It's really knowing your time. And you basically, when you leave port, way over here, you know, if you can kind of figure out your time or track your time, then, you know, you're going to, you'll be able to figure out your longitude. So um, and, uh, way back in, I believe it was uh, early 1700s, um, England, okay, uh, I think it was the parliament, they basically put out a, a uh, reward, a contest, and they said, hey, we need someone to figure out how to keep time out at sea, longitude. Now, they could do it on land, okay, keeping time, time on land was not a problem because they had some really accurate time pieces, right? Like grandfather clocks and stuff like that. But you couldn't keep this big, massive grandfather clock, right? Just think about it for a second. I'm just kind of drawing one here. Here's a little clock here. Things a little swinging back and forth. Big, massive instrument, right? Um, here's our little clock. Well, it's actually not little. It's actually maybe pretty big. What was the problem with having this huge, super accurate land timepiece? Well, as soon as you put it on a sailing ship, this thing would be going back and forth, rocking around, and uh, the seawater would get into it. So it was a real problem. You couldn't take a, um, like a grandfather clock, for example, and expect it to do well out on a ship. So the uh, England, the parliament, in the early 1700s basically put out a reward. Say, hey, whoever figures this thing out, you know, uh, and, and the reward effectively was... Um, a accurate timepiece, okay? How can we accurately keep time on a ship, okay? And it would stand. And there were certain um, requirements, you know, it had to be, you know, have a certain level of accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. So a person, okay, an inventor, a man named John Harrison, and you probably don't know that name in history, or maybe you do, but John Harrison, he basically d invented the first clock. And the first clock, you know, I'll write his name down here. John Harrison. And he created or invented the first clock. It was called the H1. All right, the H1 uh, timepiece. And that was in the year 1737, okay? He, and it's basically like a look, you know, it's bigger than an actual like a uh, 
stopwatch. It was, you know, not too big, but it was accurate enough to keep time, accurate time on board a ship. Okay. And a timepiece on board a ship is called a chronometer. And each ship to, to this day has a very accurate chronometer. And in the Navy, you actually have, you know, it's obviously more modern than the very first one, but it's kind of like a wind up type of deal. You, you know, you, you know, it's like you got to monitor it, et cetera, because if you lose all your electronics and your GPS and everything else, that's all you have. And so anyways, when uh, John Harrison came up with this, it started to really revolutionize um, uh, navigation. Now you think about what, what, you know, occurred. Once you were able to keep longitude and latitude, now you could start taking different tracks. You can go from Spain down to maybe to Venezuela directly. As in, this is kind of just really started opening up the world. You know, are going from, uh, I'm using Spain here, for example, down here to uh, Florida, you know, or going to different ports to Africa and just start interconnecting the world because people wouldn't get lost. And to be able to do, you know, take these tracks you know, um, in the shortest amount of time, you would need to know latitude and longitude. It really completely just was really like one of the most important uh, discoveries, breakthroughs. Because think about it, if you didn't have longitude, we'd still be, you know, the world wouldn't be as interconnected. And the ability to go to make navigation easier, obviously we could you know, it helped <laughs> beat the pirates. But beyond that, right, it increased global trade. OK, so and language and trade and cultures and politics and, you know, or, uh, relationships across the world. So huge, huge discovery. Um, there's a great book out there. It's called Longitude. And um, it's an excellent. It's not too it's a it's a pretty short little paperback. But if you're interested in more about this topic, you, you can, um, you know, you'd want to uh, take a look at that book. But. I may have been a little bit off with some of my history here, but but the essence of what I'm explaining is definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, pretty pretty spot on. So when you think about time, okay, and how critical it is in our human experience on so many different levels, right? You think about time in terms of navigation, time. Your your computer cannot work with an accurate timepiece. You, you know, software. Everything is centered on time, you know, and it's just such a huge overarching concept in our world. But anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you uh, maybe got a little, you know, something out of this in terms of at least hopefully now you definitely know what latitude and longitude is. And, um, and you know, really have a great appreciation for longitude and our ability to find it. So if you enjoyed this video... Me would like to subscribe and maybe give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think. You know, um, uh, I always, uh, you know, try to read the comments and, and get, you know, uh, inspired by people's curiosity about certain things. And these are the type of videos I like to do. But again, thanks for watching and have a great day.